Hey guys, DB Rye here, and motivated to do part two of this What If Already, continuing with What If Goku Met Gine in HFIL part two. Now, I understand part one has already caused a little bit of controversy on the channel, but I'll let that slide because, yeah, fair enough, I will admit I did use 50% at least 50% of our uh, Masco X's What If Goku Met Bardock in HFIL just to get the story started, mind you. Just to get the story started, and hopefully from here, from part two, I can take this What If in a different direction. And um, since we're also on the subject, I'd like to remind every um, fan out there that watches What Ifs, you can't copyright a What If, and... Um, yeah, there are like mil like hundreds of other versions of um, what if Goku met Gine on YouTube and what if Goku met Bardock on on YouTube. So it's not like the ideas haven't been done before. So okay, so so with that and with that out of the way, let's continue on with the story. Well, it has been a little bit of time, uh, at least a couple of months since Goku had his brief meeting with Gine, who was providing all the catering and food for the um, Outworld Martial Arts Tournament. You know, the one where um, Goku and Pycon tied. So Gine got to see her son in action and in battle, and witnessed the Super Saiyan transformation, and um, Goku got quite a few glimpses of his mother, and um, I guess in a way got to try her amazing cooking Especially the way he uh, wolfed it down definitely made Gine happy, from what she could observe. After all, she was supposed to be working, after all. Gine, chef-serving captain, does nothing of the sort. Okay, I'll admit that was sort of a Batman Alfred reference, but anyway, moving right along. Um, so yeah, Goku has been um, training... And since King Kai still doesn't have his planet back yet, they'd still be, I imagine, somewhere around Grand, Grand Kai's area. Which is okay, um, Goku has access to all the martial art training facilities, so he can muster up do all the training he wants, except that he's still bothering King Kai and driving him bananas, especially about the, um, about his cooking. And, um... Well, Goku's complaining, why can't we have some of the good food like we did during the tournament? And um, King Kai's not l enjoying having his food criticized, but this is when Goku remembers the um, Saiyan woman that he both saw at HFIL ever briefly and met briefly during the tournament who provided all the cooking and catering, and the amazing cook she was, so, and that he promised to stop by and um, have a meal with her. So, Goku is just about ready to take her up on that offer, finding her energy and ready to teleport his way to HFIL, when um, King Kai basically stops him on his track. Goku, you can't do that! There are proper channels to do such things, it's either gonna be... Clarified by either King Yama or Grand Kai. You can't just up and go to HFIL whenever you want. Why would you want to go there anyway? And so Goku pipes up and tells King Kai all about the same woman he met during the um, otherworldly martial arts tournament. And this strikes um, a bit of a curiosity in King Kai because it's not... Very often, if um at all, that a Saiyan gets to um keep their body, considering all the evil they've done out through the years, conquering planets in the name of Frieza, the billions upon billions that they've massacred. As far as King Kai knew, um, Goku and um, Vegeta were the only ones spared that fate, and um. Well, so, um, while Goku is off training one day, King Kai uses this opportunity to dig deep on this Saiyan. Ah, uh, what was it? Goku said her name was, uh, Gine, was it? And as he, um, dig, 
digs deep down and pulling up any bits of information he can find, he makes the discovery that Gine is the husband of Bardock and is the mother of his prized pupil, Goku. And this takes him by surprise, and this would explain how the two of them were able to meet, because, well, Gine would have wanted it, and um, Kakarot would have been curious about another Saiyan. And, um, well, this, um, it occurs to King Kai that he can actually do something good for Goku, and at the same time, get him out of his hair, so to speak. So, King Kai approaches um, King Yama, and, well, after a bit of um, convincing with um, King Yama, and, reve and revealing to the fact that um, King, that Gine is the um, mother of Goku, something he sort of um, couldn't have known when he first sentenced her, and being the mother of pretty much the um, universe's greatest hero at this point, or at least one of their greatest at this point, initially King Yama granted the request that Gine would now be released from HFIL, still remain a cook, but to be King Kai's personal cook. And of course, King Kai is doing this for uh, completely selfish reasons, because cooking for a Saiyan is very taxing, and especially when um, Goku's constantly criticising it. So, at least with Gine's cooking, that should keep Goku and King Kai happy, and as well as, um, essentially keeping Goku out of his hair. And, um, well, meanwhile on HFIL, Gine is getting her, um, marching orders, and, um, well, as she arrives at, um, back at the, um, I forget what you call the place, King Yama's, I, I guess we'll just call it King Yama's sorting station for now, he is She's basically greeted by, um, King Kai, who instantly takes her to, um, w well, where they're currently staying. She always, she, it's funny when she questions, um, well, let's say Gine recognizes King Kai as Goku's personal trainer, so she pretty much is immediately guessing where this is heading, and she's quite surprised to find herself back at, um, Grand Kai's place, because, well, she's aware that the, um, four Kais have their own, have their own planet. This is the Grand Kai's place. What about your planet, King Kai? Well, um, your son kind of blew it up. <laughs> and, um, well... Gine is already pretty much put to work, preparing a good meal, and, um, well, Goku finally comes back from his training for, for the day, and there's this awesome spread out there prepared for him, and, um, Goku digs in, expecting the usual kind of quality that he gets when King Kai cooks. Oh, wow, this is delicious! And he's, uh, chomping down, wolfing it down. Gine can hear the the, um, gratitude from, um, outside the, um, kitchen, and is, um, relieved, but then she hears this. <laughs> well, King Kai, I see you finally learned how to cook, and this, um, uh, gets on King Kai's nerves immediately. I didn't make this, Goku, my new cook did, and out from the, um, kitchen emerges, well, guess who? It is Gine. Hmm? Hey! You're that Saiyan I met during the martial arts tournament. Huh. Yes, I am, Kakarot. And King Kai butts in. Goku, may I introduce Gine? Our new cook 
and, of course, your mother. And uh, this hits um, Kakarot like a freight train. And suddenly, it made, it made sense. How Gine knew his Saiyan name? I mean, at first, when um, Gine addressed him as Kakarot before, Goku merely assumed that his Saiyan name had hit, um, had been mentioned around as well as his Earth name. It wasn't that out of the ordinary to him. But now that he's got an explanation, Goku is just riddled with questions from his mother. For starters, what is such a nice, a seemingly nice Saiyan like her doing in HFIL? And well, Kine is forced to, um, well, tell her his story, and that, unfortunately, Kakarot, I had killed my fair share of people. Billions, in fact. You see, back on planet Vegeta, we had a policy that the weakest of our race were sent to other planets to conquer them. Weaker planets, that Saiyans, even like me, could conquer no problem, with the aid of the full moon, of course. Even though killing wasn't my intention, I was never eating it, I couldn't control myself in the great ape state. And then after that, I was shipped off to the military and supposedly fitted in with um, a bunch of other misfits. <laughs> Nor did they know they fought better than most of their elites and that's how I met your father. And even then, I had to kill. And well, when one one day on a mission, your father saved me from being killed, and after realizing I was becoming dead weight, I realized I wasn't fit for that kind of life, Kakarot. So from then on the in, I became a cook. And well, somehow, for reasons I still partially don't understand, your father and I got along, and well, we mated, and well, we had your older brother Raditz. And don't worry, I forgive you for what happened to Raditz. I understand that completely. He threatened your family, tried to kill you, and my grandson. So yes, I do forgive you and don't blame you for what happened to Raditz. Raditz made his own choices. And well, that does um, relieve Goku a little bit in his part that he played in Raditz's death, at least. And, um, well, um, essentially with that, Gine told him about how eventually they had, they, Bardock and her had him, and that both of them made sure Goku got off the planet all right before Frieza went ahead and destroyed it. And, well, that does hit Goku's soft spot that it was his parents that indeed saved his life. That Raditz got the whole story wrong. He was never sent to Earth to conquer it. He was simply there, he was sent to Earth to uh, survive. He was rescued by his parents. And, um, Gine kind of hoped Bardock Bardock was wrong about the whole Frieza incident because this did mean that she missed out on sparring sessions she could have had with her son and you know at least help prepare him as best she could as um you know just like she you would have imagined would have done for Raditz whenever she wasn't cooking for the Saiyan army and so basically Kakarot takes his mother by the hand, helping her up after their little sit down and talk, and they start having a sparring session right then and there. Now, of course, you can imagine, because Goku just completely overwhelms her in power, she's basically beaten pretty easily. Now, her power level before her first sparring session with her son was actually caught up to Raditz. Oh, but D.B. Rai, how did that happen? Um, remember back in part one, she took a beating by, um, Frieza and the other, 
villains who tried to um, escape from HFIL before Goku and Pycon cleaned up the mess? Well, yes. Even though, since she's already dead, she can't die, she has gotten quite the Zenkai boost from it. Which, um, pretty much went from a 500 power to a 700 power level increase. And, um, needless to say, these sparring sessions and training on King Kai's planet, who... Uh, 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 sorry, my bad, again, King Kai's planet is not restored yet. But, having someone to spar with, like her son, that towers in power, it is definitely helping her out in terms of her power. And, um... This isn't giving Goku much benefits, who still does a majority of his training alone, but Kine is happy to provide the um, meal back when he's um, done with the um, tournament. <laughs> done with his training, sorry. And well, this is where he um, overhears some new news that there is a new tournament coming up, and that... Um, He's already gone ahead and spoken to Baba in getting some arrangement to get a day pass so he can compete in the tournament too, considering that his son Gohan and the others are entering it too. And pretty much he's already got the green light to enter the tournament. Enter the tournament. And um, Goku was more or less hoping they could bring Gine along for, for a even for a day to meet the rest of the family. But... Unfortunately, she hasn't done quite enough good to really merit that kind of reward. But Goku isn't about to um, give up just yet, because, well, they might be able to use the Dragon Balls to bring her back. After all, single resurrection wishes do not have that, um, um, if you've been dead for a year time limit on them. After all, we wouldn't have had the, um... Resurrection of Frieza Arc in Dragon Ball Super, if that were the case. Kami did state that um, if you're trying to bring back groups of people, like the massive resurrection they did with um, the Namekians who died back in the Frieza Arc, yes, um, you, the dra you could only do that within the year they, they had died. But everyone else, it was, and as long as it was um, a single resurrection wish, it was pretty much fair game. At least as far as my understanding of the rules go. And, um, well, Goku would train harder and harder for the um, tournament. He would still make time to spar with um, Gine, if ve very much amountly to, um, To basically, basically for her benefit, as it were. After all, she missed she missed out on getting to have sparring sessions with Kakarot growing up, thanks to Frieza blowing up the planet and them having to get Kakarot off world. Mm. She was definitely happy for um, getting to spend time with her son and um, learning about all his adventures, including the recent, you know what happened went down between Cell, and of course, him explaining how he was resurrected the first time after he was, he and Raditz had killed each other. And that there are things called Dragon Balls that could resurrect the dead. And that Goku really feeling that Kine really doesn't deserve to be dead, Definitely didn't deserve to spend the last 30 to 40 years in HFIL. At least while he's down there for a day, perhaps they can use the Dragon Balls to bring Gine back. And, um, even it means that, that Goku, you know, has to still remain in Outworld. So with that, Goku is on his way to have his, uh, day in the tournament. And pretty much, um, Gohan... And Chi Chi have promised they will resurrect Gine. Even, if, even though it means Goku will be staying behind. And as we know, the Earth Dragon Balls have resurrected Goku before anyway.
And a, um, well, at least for now, this is where we're going to leave things for right now. So, yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, now that I've taken this direction, it's kind of hard not to... Um, De def definitely still some similarities to Moscow X's version oh, with the um, what if Bardock uh, what if Goku met Bardock HFIL and again I do apologize for that but hopefully we can still salvage this as we continue on at least life with the family will be different Anyways, again, leave your thoughts in the comments, um, don't forget forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this, and, um, yeah, and as always in the comments, you know, let's keep everything respectable, yeah?